and welcome to Belfast. My name is Dr. Tom Thorpe and I'm one of the co-directors of Anti-Slavery Belfast. Now today we're going to do a very short video taking you on a brief odyssey of some of the places that Frederick Douglass visited and spoke at in the 1840s when he came to Belfast as part of his All Island Tour. Now I'm just starting here at um, Belfast Showcase. So you can see the building behind me is Belfast City Hall. So this is where the town council uh, meet and run the town or the city of Belfast from and they uh, govern and they will come into our story very briefly uh, as we move on. So what we're doing, what we'll do today, we've got we've got four, four sites we're going to visit, and I'll give you a bit of a um, bit of chat when we get to each one, and just tell you about what happened, what Frederick Douglass did, how he was received, and um, how he was treated during his brief visit to Belfast. So he came, comes to Belfast in the 1840s. So Belfast then is very much a changing city. It is part of the Industrial Revolution. Uh, it, it has grown to a population of 75,000 in 1841 and it's increasingly becoming the industrial centre of Ireland. It has a large cotton spinning industry and that's slowly declining to be replaced by linen. So it becomes, becomes known as Lininopolis. Um, also you, you can see the starting of the ship industry. The shipping industry is obviously, shipbuilding industry is obviously famous because the Titanic was built in Belfast. And that is obviously uh, 60 odd years from the time we are speaking. So Belfast is an important city. So why is Frederick Douglass in Belfast? Well, it's part of an all island tour. Um, if you want to know more about what he did in Ireland, then read um, Lawrence Fenton's book on a Douglas in Ireland. It's a really, really great read and it covers his time in Belfast. But Belfast is important for two reasons. Firstly, it's becoming a center of industry and wealth within Belfast so it's becoming increasingly influential within the island as Ireland as a, not only as a port but an industrial centre and secondly Belfast has a very very strong tradition of anti-slavery so this starts in the 1790s when a former slave uh, a gentleman by the name of Alado Equiano visited the, the city and promoted the um, abolition of slavery within the British Empire that is a slave trade within the uh, British Empire and he visits a number of places in Belfast and sells his biography which documents his time as a slave when he was taken from modern day Benin across the uh, Atlantic and sold into slavery in Jamaica. He purchases his freedom, becomes a sailor in the Royal Navy, serves with a well-known captain Horatio Nelson, a British Admiral who triumphs over the French during the Battle of Trafalgar in 1805 and um, Equiano comes to Belfast and tells about the horrors of slavery and this joins a very much a, a very strong tradition within Belfast of anti-slavery and people in Belfast are at the fore of many movements to firstly abolish the slave trade and then the institution of slavery within the British Empire during the uh, 1830s. So in 1845 there still is an anti-slavery society in Belfast and Douglas comes to talk to a number of these uh, individuals at meetings that they hold across Belfast and we'll start visiting some of those in a minute. So we're walking now down uh, Donegal Place, away from the City Hall, and now we come to our next stop. So I'm just going to pan the camera around, and you can see behind me uh, on the corner, that is a branch of McDonald's. Now, that when Douglas was in Belfast, it was the primitive Wesleyan Chapel in Donegal Place. So this was a non-conformist church where he had uh, been invited. He gave a talk on the 8th of July 1846 and this was a really really interesting um, meeting. He goes there he said and, and it's reported in the Belfast Commercial Chronicle that um, he was there and he, there was another, another chance to um, opportunity to explore the evils of slavery and there were three really interesting individuals there. So it's just on this corner here. So this is the corner of High Street uh, and Donegal Place. And the High Street leads, that's the street behind me, you can see leading down to the uh, docks or where the docks used to be. So the, the, the Wesleyan Church used to occupy this site. Unfortunately, it was knocked down um, in the latter part of the 20th century. And now I don't think there are any photographs of it that I've come across, which is a, is a real pity. So Douglas did not go into a branch of McDonald's, but he was on that site. 
So there were three individuals there, and th these individuals really are, are fascinating, and it shows the power of Douglas, but also um, of the, the cause for which he represented. Firstly, there was a, a gentleman known as um, Isaac Nelson. Isaac Nelson was a Presbyterian preacher, a remarkable individual. Uh, he comes from, he was a, a virulent uh, abolitionist and uh, campaigned tirelessly to abolish slavery. But he, he comes from a Presbyterian tradition, uh, unlike most Presbyterians in Belfast, he was a nationalist. So he wanted some form of devolved power uh, in Dublin. So that's where um, much of Ireland would be self-governing. And he becomes an MP for the Irish um, Parliamentary Party in the latter part of the 19th century. So he's on this platform. And then there's, there's two other really interesting individuals who are on this platform with him. First is a guy called John Edgar. He's a Presbyterian minister from the county of Armagh. That's in the southern part of Northern Ireland and he borders the Republic of Ireland. And he's well known because he did a lot of work on temperance. Um, he also established what was known as the um, Belfast Female Penitentiary. So the, the Ulster Female Penitentiary. So this was um, a, a laundry. So we've, you may have heard of the Magdalene laundries established by the Catholic Church in Ireland during the 19th century, which looked after women who had illegitimate children and they, they were scenes of abuse. And some very unpleasant stories have emerged from the Republic of Ireland over the last 25 years or so. But these institutions also operated in the north of Ireland and by the Protestant church. So he was establishing this in institution. He, I think, probably did it for noble reasons, um, but was involved in it. But he was also very influential within the Presbyterian church in, in Ireland and was the moderator of the General Assembly. Again, that's an important body we will come to later. The third individual, now this is the most remarkable individual, is, a, is, a, is an Anglican or Episcopalian uh, preacher known as Thomas Drew. Now Thomas Drew was, um, in the 1850s, responsible for inciting riots across Belfast uh, where a number of people were killed. There was a parliamentary inquiry after this happened in 1857 and he was directly blamed for inciting uh, hatred against the um, Catholic minority here where a number of people were killed. So he was very much uh, a sec sectarianist in many ways and promoted sectarian division. Now, he was a remarkable individual and he talked of um, Douglas as the um, sling in the... Um, is a stone, sorry, it's a stone in the sling of uh, David that would s um, slay the Goliath of slavery. And he was actually chairing the meeting that Douglas was speaking at. And Douglas gets up and speaks there and he's, he's given a rapturous applause. But it's interesting that the anti-slavery cause brings together people from very different uh, political traditions within Ireland. And this was really quite remarkable. Uh, in that sense that anti-slavery is an issue that united people across the, the political divide, uh, especially between unionists and nationalists. So that's, uh, that's where Douglas spoke in July 1847. So we have um, arrived at the junction of Lombard Street and Rosemary Street. So this is one of the oldest streets in Belfast. Now, you can see a plinth is coming up behind me now. On this junction of these uh, two streets, there will be a statue of Frederick Douglass erected sometime later this year. Now, this, this is still being debated by um, the elected councillors in Belfast City Hall. That's the building we started in front of. And they're due to um, publish uh, the, what the statue will look like and, some, and erect it sometime later this year. I think it's going to go on the plinth behind me. Apparently, it's going to be about two, two, two and a half metres tall. So it's going to be quite, quite, a, quite a structure. So welcome to our fourth stop. So we are in Donegal Street. So Donegal Street is one of the most historic um, streets in Belfast and it has a lot of history and a lot of connections with Frederick Douglass. There are three places in which he spoke, one place where he stayed and no doubt places that he walked up and down when he was here uh, in the 1840s. So the building we're going to look at here is this uh, church directly behind me. Now this is currently the Congregationalist Church on Donegal Street or Redeemer Central as it's known um, and it's um, unfortunately Douglas did not speak in there he spoke in a building that previously occupied that site and that was known as the Independent Meeting House and it, and it was one quote of Spartan simplicity 
uh, and it was knocked down in the 1850s and this Gothic Revival church was built in its place. So this is where, where Douglas spoke um, firstly on the 19th of December 1845 and it was a packed meeting. It was um, chaired by Andrew Mulholland. Now Mulholland was a well-known linen uh, merchant and a very very rich man and he was the town mayor. Again many um, of the great and the good were here to greet Thomas also moving back to, to allow people to come past uh, on this street and he was one of those people who, who was delighted to meet Douglas. Again this was a meeting which meeting was packed um, and there was a a great sort of rapture and interest in, in Douglas. Now what's really interesting is that, that many people who attend these meetings were from Belfast literate and intellectual elites, you know, people who ran industry, people who also had leisure and time. Now anti-slavery in America was not a popular cause and indeed there were many racist attitudes uh, amongst the population. Um, one um, example is in May 1844, about six, seven months before Douglas um, leaves America for um, Europe, there was um, a performance by, quote, a group called the Virginia, Virginia Minstrels, who, quote, and I, I will quote from this, who uh, impersonated American Negro characters. So we come to our final stop um, of today's short odyssey around Belfast, and we're looking at um, the commercial buildings, what known as kind of commercial buildings. So they were built in 1819. So what happens here is that um, Douglas on the 6th of January 1846 holds a farewell meeting for his uh, first visit to Belfast and the room is packed and again it's attended by many of the great and the good of Belfast. This includes uh, an MP, William Sharman Crawford. He is an MP for Rochdale which is a, a linen town or a mill town in Lancashire that's in north of England, very near Liverpool and Manchester. But he's also a landowner in Ireland and, and is involved in a number of political and radical causes. He's part of the Chartist movement, which is a movement for democratic enfranchisement of men, um, so especially working class men, the male population in England, which is, is involved large, larger um, meetings, protests and things like that. And um, Crawford's involved in that radical cause. He's also interested in slavery. So on the morning of the 6th, everybody meets. The meet, apparently the meeting room is heaving with people, uh, lots of people want to say goodbye to Douglas and he, um, he's greeting. So Sharman is, is duly elected um, as the chair of the meeting and um, says the meeting has two functions. Firstly to celebrate the British constitution that nobody uh, who reaches British soil can be enslaved um, and, and will be cast into slavery. This he, he thinks is a great great triumph for the British Constitution and also that Britain has abolished slavery, another wonderful triumph he says. In a way you can see this is rather rather smug given the British Empire had 200 years of slavery beforehand and had, um, had been one of the major instigators and propagators of the slave trade. But not to worry. So the second thing is to, to, to say thank you very much to um, what Frederick Douglass had done in Belfast. And he's greeted by Isaac Nelson. We've talked about Nelson um, there, so I will quote. So Nelson says that the burning words of Frederick Douglass had produced their effect and made those who, who had the privilege of hearing him feel the wrongs of his race. Douglass then um, is given a Bible and um, then, then gets up to speak and makes a reply to these words of, the, the, of Nelson and uh, Crawford. And he says that he's had, you know, uh, he's been greeted here and that he felt that he had, from being a chattel, he had become a man. Um, a well-known quote, but it's reported in the um, Belfast Commercial Chronicle. And he, he also says that he will always have a home in Belfast. So what are we, what are we to make of um, Douglas's trip to Belfast? Well, certainly he has an, has an important impact in reinvigorating the anti-slavery movement. You can see that with the establishment of the female anti-slavery movement, but also in terms of promoting his cause and there's lots of editorials that support what he does. But in many ways, his visit is very much overshadowed by events that are unfolding as he uh, comes here. There had been a widespread um, 
potato blight across Ireland. Um, the potato was a very much a stable a staple food of the majority of the population, especially the agrarian population in places like Southern and, and Western Ireland. And a famine uh, ensued in the late 1840s. And this, in a way, gets in the way of Douglas's involvement. Many people turn their attentions away from anti-slavery activity to activity to try and alleviate the famine in West of Ireland. Edgar, uh, John Edgar being a case in point, and a number of Quakers um, also say, feel that they can't really campaign about slavery when people are dying on their doorstep. So in a way, this, the, the famine puts to an end, in many ways, the anti-slavery movement in Belfast. Um, and the famine is, is, a, is a tremendous tragedy within an island. It, it kills over a million people and another million emigrate. So it has a tremendous impact on the country. And uh, even though Belfast was not, in a way, it's hit as hard as other parts of Ireland, it was a major problem here. And many people turned to uh, phil philanthropic work to help relieve the suffering that the famine caused. So that is the end of the tour. I'm having a well-deserved pint in the Northern Wig. And actually, I've just been considering there's a very good chance that Frederick Douglass may well have had the old pint. So this is a pint of Guinness. Guinness has been made from, um, made in Dublin since the mid uh, 18th century. And it's been sold all around Ireland. There's a very good chance he may well have had a pint of this when he was here, um, but we'll never know. And on that bombshell, thank you very much for watching. If you're ever in Belfast and you want to do um, a tour of um, slavery you'll find us on the internet and social media and it's goodbye from me and goodbye from my colleague Mark who unfortunately couldn't be with us so until next time take care <laughs>